Hello everyone at Great Morven Primary School. I am so happy to join you today for a Football School World Book Day special lesson. My name is Ben Littleton. My initials are here on my Football School jersey and I am the co-author of the Football School series of books. And as you can see here, there are quite a lot of books in this series. There are actually 10 in all. I've got five of them there. And I write these books with my very good friend, Alex Bellos, who for obvious reasons, can't be with me today. And I talk about Alex a lot, and when I do, I try and look a bit like him as well. Now, he looks like me, but he's got lots of black curly hair. So when I talk about Alex, this is what I will be looking like. And football school, if you don't know the books, is a school where every lesson is about football. So what we'll be doing today is having a normal school day, really, with lessons that you may be familiar with, but we'll be talking about football and learning about the world through football. We're going to sing a song, we're going to do a lesson, we're going to have a quiz, and then I'll be asking you some questions as well. So when I do ask you a question, I will want you to pause your screen, whether you're with teachers, parents, siblings, or on your own, just pause your video, have a think about your answers, and then say your answers. Okay, so let's get cracking. I'm going to blow my referee's whistle. <whistles> Every lesson is going to be about this football. And to start with, I'm going to share my screen just so you can see what I'm talking about when I talk about the books. Because here are some of the books. I hope you can see the screen now. Here are some of the books there, 10 of them in all. But the one I really want to talk to you about today is this one. It's called 20 Fantastic Football Stories. And it is available for free as a World Book Day special offer because there are little tokens that you can get through your school and if you haven't got one ask your school to help you with it and in return for the tokens you can get a free book that's worth a pound on and around world book day from participating booksellers that little logo the yellow logo which says world book day on the book means that it's available to everyone for just one pound and it is a fantastic book as it says in the title it's got 20 fantastic football stories in it so as I said, football school is a school where every lesson is about football. And when I say every lesson, I mean every lesson. Here's an example of a timetable that we have from our season one book. And some of the lessons there will be things you're familiar with. English, maths, music, computing, PHSE. All these lessons are things that you would do in your school. But in football school, we do it by talking about football. And we start every lesson or every session in football school with a song just like you might do in an assembly now you might be doing that remotely or even uh, when you go back to school which i hope will be very soon you'll be standing in an assembly hall and be able to sing a song with your friends and so i have written a song especially for today and especially for great morgan primary school and this is it so i'm going to sing it it's the football school hymn is what i call it and I'm going to sing it, and then I want you to sing it with me. So I'll give you the tune, especially for today. Now, I must warn you, I am an incredible singer. Incredibly bad. So apologies for that. So I'll give you the tune, and then you can sing it second time around. So let me sing it first. Here we go. <clears throat> we love reading on World Book Day. We're Great Malvern with football school. We're Great Malvern reading champions. It's World Book Day with football school. So I can hear you all clapping from here. Yeah, well, some of you, maybe some of you with your fingers in your ears. But when I blow my whistle, I want you to join in and sing with me. Here we go. We love reading on World Book Day. We're Great Malvern with football school. We're Great Malvern reading champions. It's World Book Day with football school. Well done, give yourselves a big clap as well. Now, 
your teachers may have talked to you about why we all sing songs together in the morning at, at school and even if we're learning remotely. And there's something really powerful about song and singing together. It brings communities together and it makes us all feel like we're part of the same team, really. So even if we're at home and not able to be at school, it's really nice just to sing together. And the same happens at football matches as well. If you've been to a football match or you've watched a match uh, on TV, you might sing to spur your team on to help them. And fans really do help their teams when they're all singing together. There's a real sense of collective community that comes from singing together. That's why I like to start uh, every session of football school with a song. Because I now feel that Great Morven Primary School and Football School are now really part of the same community. So what I'm going to do now is give you a very quick lesson, uh, a football school lesson, and I'll be asking you some questions. So when I ask a question, I want you to pause the video. The first lesson we're going to do today in football school is one of my favourites. If I could find it, it's geography. And geography is, of course, the study of the world and how it affects us. And in this geography lesson, we're going to be talking about the biggest country in South America. The country is Brazil. And you can see it's in the shaded area there. Now, just before I pause this video, I want you to have a think about anything at all that you know about Brazil. And because it's football school, it could be to do with the football in Brazil or footballers from Brazil, if you know any footballers from Brazil or any tournaments that have been in Brazil. There was a World Cup there quite recently. I'm not going to give you any clues. Or it could be about the geography of Brazil or other things. And there are things on this picture here that might give you a clue. So pause the video now. Have a very quick think about anything you know about Brazil. And then come back to me when you've had that think. Okay, welcome back. I'm hoping that you've had an interesting discussion or some thoughts about Brazil. And I'm fascinated to know what you came up with. I wonder if anyone mentioned the famous Brazilian footballers that play uh, in the world today. Someone like Neymar, maybe someone said, the most expensive and skillful player currently playing in the world. Or what about some of the Brazilians at Premier League Champions Liverpool, like Alison Becker or uh, Roberto Firmino or, or Fabinho, another of their players. Or what about the Brazilians at Manchester City? Edison, the goalkeeper, Gabriel Jesus, or Arsenal, William and David Luiz. There are loads of Brazilians. There's a Brazilian at, at Tottenham Hotspur, um, Lucas Moura. Um, so there are loads of Brazilians playing in the Premier League and all over the world. And Brazil is the most successful national team when it comes to football. They've won the World Cup five times, more times than anyone else. And the reason I know so much about Brazilian football really is not down to me. It's down to my friend Alex. Now, I mentioned him earlier. This is Alex. He used to live in Brazil because I'll be talking about Alex. I'm going to put on my Alex Belos wig because this is how uh, this is what he looks like. And I wrote the books with him. I was lucky enough to write the books with a very good friend of mine. But before we wrote the books together, Alex used to live in Brazil and he was there for five years. And he says to me he worked really hard. But this is really what I think he was doing in Brazil, building sandcastles and sitting on the beach. But actually, it's not quite true. He wrote a book about Brazilian football and it became really popular, both in Brazil and outside Brazil. One person who read it who really liked it was maybe a Brazilian football that you mentioned when I asked you to think about Brazil. And that person was Pele, who is probably one of the greatest footballers ever to have played the game is certainly one of the most famous Brazilians of all time. He won the World Cup three times for Brazil and scored over a thousand goals for all his teams. And Pelé read Alex's book and liked it so much that when it was time for Pelé himself to write the book of his own life, his autobiography, he actually asked Alex to write that book for him, which is really incredible. So Alex wrote Pelé's autobiography and Alex and Pelé became good friends. Now, I'm friends with Alex, Alex is friends with Pele, so I think that makes me actually really good friends with Pele, even though we've never met. That doesn't matter. Anyway, that's a slight discretion, di digression about um, Pele and Alex, but it is relevant to our geography lesson because in geography, we're asking questions about the world around us and how it affects us. And in this particular geography lesson, I'm going to be asking you about the climate of Brazil and why it produces so many of the great footballers that we've discussed. 
because some of you might have seen the clues on the map here of other things that are in Brazil. I can take this off now because it's very hot. It's the Amazon River. I wonder if any of you mentioned the Amazon River or the Amazon Rainforest. And when we think about what the weather's like in the rainforest, there's a clue in the name. The rainforest is very wet and very rainy. Now, what does that mean for grass pitches in this tropical climate where it's really hot and really wet and rainy? It means that grass pitches simply cannot grow. So in Brazil, there are very few grass pitches. Now, in Morven, I know there's lots of grass and there's probably quite a lot of grass pitches. So you can go outside in your break and play on beautiful grass pitches outside. In Brazil, they can't. They play football here. On the beach. Now, if you've ever tried to play football on the beach, you'll know that it's actually very difficult. The ball goes everywhere, it's very wobbly and uneven on your feet, so it's really difficult. Brazilians also learn to play football in, in the city and in small spaces, on concrete, on bumpy terrain, and in tiny spaces in these giant cities. So the Brazilians don't have that much room or facilities to play to learn football from an early age when they're your age. Which is a bit of a disadvantage really when you think about it, they're no grass pitches, but we all end up playing football on grass. But what the Brazilians have done that makes them so skillful and so clever is they've mastered the art of skill and control and dribbling in these conditions. So they play on the beach and they play in these cities and these bumpy areas and small spaces. And once you can master your skills in those conditions, it's much easier to play on a wide open grass pitch. So they've turned the disadvantage brought about by the climate, by the geography of Brazil, and turned it into an advantage. Now there's another reason why Brazilians are so skillful, and it is to do with this picture, which I wonder if anyone, if anyone can guess what it represents. There's me dancing at the front and Alex at the back. It is actually a carnival. And every year in Brazil, they have the Rio Carnival, which is a huge, a uh, party which goes on in the streets where millions of people come out and dance. And they play the national music of Brazil, which is the samba. And the samba music is something that all Brazilians grow up knowing and loving. And it's a type of music and a type of dance. And the dance involves wiggling your hips and keeping your body upright and very straight. The reason that's got something to do with football is because when you watch these Brazilian players dribble, they're essentially dancing the samba because they're using their hips, their super flexible hips, to dribble past opponents. And that is part of their cultural upbringing. So as soon as a Brazilian child can walk, uh, he, learn, he or she knows how to dance the samba. So when you watch players like Neymar or William or Jesus or Coutinho or Firmino dribbling past opponents, they're essentially dancing the samba. Now, Pele taught Alex how to dance the samba, and Alex taught me how to samba, but I'm sure you don't want to see me dance the samba. No, well, you don't want to see me dance the samba if I'm not going to dance the samba on my own, and I'm not going to do it remotely either. So I'm going to ask your teachers to dance the samba with me. How about that? Would that be good? All right, so let's get your teachers up, and I'll get up, but we are not stupid. So I suggest your teachers get up, I get up, and you will get up, whether you're at home or at school, and we'll all dance the samba together. Now, hopefully there'll be some music, but there might not be because sometimes my samba music doesn't work. Okay, so when I stand up, let's hope there's some music and we'll all dance the samba together. And to avoid my um, dancing uh, shame, I will look a bit more like Alex. Okay, so what I want us all to do is dance the samba by wiggling our hips and keeping our upper body very straight. Okay, hang on. So my samba doesn't work, my music, but I will blow my whistle and I'm going to ask us all to dance the summer by wiggling our hips and keeping our upper body straight. Okay, just like Neymar, just like William and Coutinho and David Luiz and Thiago Silva, all these players, Marquinhos, uh, thinking of famous Brazilians, Lucas Moura, all these Brazilians, wiggle those hips, keep your upper body very straight, and that's how Neymar plays, that's how he dribbles past opponents. And I'm sure all your teachers are doing it as well. I've actually seen one of your teachers, Mrs. Spence, dance an incredible samba before, so I know she'll be doing it. So dance your samba, and I'll blow my whistle so we can all stop, because it's probably a little bit tiring. Dancing the samba, whatever time of day. Good exercise. 
But on a serious note, that is that's the geography of Brazil. It's you know we start with a with a map of Brazil, but actually we learned one of the reasons why Brazilians are so skillful is because of the geography of Brazil. I'm going to end this lesson with a quick question, and I'm after the name of the Amazon, the razor toothed Amazon fish somehow breath up that likes to eat raw flesh and is strong enough to bite your finger off. So put your hands up or have a think. If you think it's an anaconda, a anaconda, do you think it's a caiman? Or do you think it's a South American finger muncher, which actually got me, it's very dangerous? Or do you think it's D, a piranha? So have a think about that, shout out the answer or discuss it with your friends if you're with anyone. Um, and it is, the answer is actually D, it is piranha. D, so well done. And a, for a bonus point, uh, I, did anyone know what a caiman is? Have a think and discuss what a caiman might be. Because I didn't know this until I was researching the book and it turns out a caiman is a baby alligator. So well done if you knew that, I'm very impressed. I did not know that. So that's our geography lesson. We whipped through it, that's excellent. Done some exercise, learned about the tropical climate in the rainforest and that's why uh, Brazilians don't learn to play football on grass, they learn uh, in cities and on the beach and that's one of the reasons why they are so skillful as well as the samba as well. So we're gonna come on to another lesson and we're gonna do a mass quiz. Now you might think, oh no, mass. That's not fun at all, but actually mass is super fun. Mass is great fun and we need it every day. I needed mass when I made my porridge for breakfast this morning because I needed to measure it out. I'm going to need my mass for dinner tonight because I'm going to work out how much I need to eat for my whole family and how much I make. I needed mass to organize my timetable for today so I could make sure I made this uh, video lesson for you as well. So we need mass all the time and of course mass is everywhere in football as well. In uh, just score lines, 2-0, 3-0, uh, in league tables, in goal difference, in shirt numbers, in uh, leading scorer tables, golden boot awards, penalty shootouts, extra time, um, all sorts of areas mass exists in football. So it's really important. So I'm going to ask you a couple of quiz questions here. And the simple question is, who scored more goals? And I'm asked, looking for players who scored more goals for their country. So I'll give you an example. Two names are going to come up on screen. Here is Diego Maradona for Argentina and Pele, who we mentioned earlier for Brazil, my great friend Pele for Brazil. And I'm going to be asking you who scored more goals. I want you to have a think about it. And if you need more time, you can always pause this video and then come back when you've thought about it. And then just write down or shout out the answer and discuss it with your friends. So for this one, it's, uh, it's not the start of the, the quiz. So this is just a, a practice run. And I'll give you a three minute, three second warning before I reveal the answer. If you need more time, you can pause the video, okay? So I'll give you a three second warning. So in three seconds, I'm gonna reveal the answer. So three, two, one. Pele scored more goals. Okay, so that was just a sample. So the first question is the real deal. And it's this one, who scored more goals? Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi? And Ronaldo for Portugal, not for his clubs, and Messi for Argentina not for his club. Okay, so have a think about it. Uh, you can discuss it with your friends if you're in a room with them or if you're on your own, just have a think about it, see what you think it might be. And in three seconds, I'm gonna give you the answer. If you need more time, simply pause the video now. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. The answer is Ronaldo. Well done if you said Ronaldo. He's actually scored over 100 goals. 102 goals, more than Lionel Messi. Okay, we're ready for the next question. Here we go. Mass. Who knew mass could be so fun? Well, I did because I love mass. And so does Alex. He actually writes books about them. He loves, loves mass so much. Okay, next question. Two female players. Marta, who is the Brazil captain, who has won the FIFA World Player of the Year award five times. And Christine Sinclair, who is captain of Canada. And she's also a forward. So there's uh, uh, some information about both players. Have a think about it. I'm going to give you three seconds. Well, I'll give you five seconds for this one because you might need some thinking time. Shout out your answer or discuss it with your friends. And in three, two, one, I'm going to reveal the answer. And it is Christine Sinclair. Now, you may not have heard of Christine Sinclair, but the number of goals she scored is phenomenal. It's 186 goals. And that's a very, well, it's a very big number, but it's also a significant number because no other player male or female, has scored as many goals for their country 
as Christine Sinclair has for Canada. So that's an incredible achievement. She is the highest ever international goal scorer. And talking of great goal scorers, the next question and the final question, if you've got two out of two right, congratulations. If you've got one right, one wrong, you really need to get this right. So good luck on this final question. Two players you'll be familiar with, I'm sure. Harry Kane, the England captain, and Neymar, who plays for Brazil. Have a think. Who do you think scored more goals for their country? Harry Kane for England or Neymar for Brazil? Okay, I'm going to give you three seconds. If you need more time, you can pause it, but the three seconds starts now. Three, two, one. Here we go. Whoops, I pressed the wrong button. What happened? Oh, my answers have gone, but I'll tell you the answer. It is Neymar. Neymar scored around 61 goals, if my memory serves me right. Harry Kane has scored 32. So Neymar, almost twice as many goals as Harry Kane, which is, well, it's an enormous amount, really. Well done if you got those questions right. So that was our maths quiz. Uh, maths is everywhere in football and in life. Now, I'm going to ask you one more important question as well. And don't forget that later on, this week or next week, there will be an opportunity for me to take your questions as well. So I'm really excited about hearing what you've got to ask me as well. Now, football school goes everywhere. Well, we used to when we could. Uh, we go on away days to Liverpool. Some of these pictures you can see me with Liverpool players. Uh, just me with Joel Matip on the left-hand side or right as you look, uh, and with Trent Alexander-Arnold and Ray Chan. Now, before I first met Trent Alexander-Arnold and he read the football school books, he was just about to break into the Liverpool team. And then he read football school. And then what happened? He became a regular in the Liverpool team. He won the Champions League with Liverpool. He won the Premier League with Liverpool. He got called up to England. He even played for England in a World Cup. And he is widely seen as one of the best defenders in the world. Now, I'm not saying that's all because he reads the football school books. No, 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 I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying reading football school will make you a better footballer. But it will make you a smarter footballer. And one thing that everyone says about Trent Alexander-Arnold is what a smart footballer he is. So be like Trent. He's a great guy, but also he loves football school. Uh, real football fans, I'd be very impressed if you knew who the player with me and Alex is next to the picture of Trent. It's actually a player from Southampton, a midfielder called Oriol Romeu. Uh, that's along the top line. And as we work along the bottom line, you can see me with a hippopotamus. That's a Stoke City mascot who's called Pottermouse, the QPR captain, Neda Manua. That's me with two Spurs Academy players. We went to a school that did an amazing event there. And some of you may have spotted that I wear a blue Peter badge. I wear that everywhere I go in the hope that someone will ask me why I'm wearing it. And the truth is, Football School Season 1 was nominated for a Book of the Year award. So I got to go on Blue Peter with Alex as well. We had great fun. And there's me in the final one with, uh, at Preston North End at a school near Preston with a Preston mascot who's called Deepdale Duck. Now, before I go, I'm going to ask you one more question. It involves the process of me writing this, these books. And as I said to you at the start, and hopefully you've understood now, I've had great fun doing it. I absolutely love football. I love writing. I love reading. It's my absolute passion. And I wish I'd have had these books to read when I was your age. And so Alex and I had this idea that we would invent a school where every lesson was about football and we'd learn and we'd have fun and we'd dance um, and it would be a real giggle. And so we found some publishers who agreed with us. They're called Walker Books. They're absolutely fantastic. They're great to work with. And we wrote them a sample chapter and wanted to know what they thought. And they said, yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's really funny. I should add that Alex and I, well, you know that Alex has already written books. He wrote a book about Brazilian football. He wrote Pele's autobiography. And he's written lots of books about maths as well. And I've also written books for grown-ups. I've written this book, which is called 12 Yards. And it's all about penalty kicks. That's right. It's 400 pages all about the penalty. So people thought I was absolutely mad to write a whole book just about one bit of football. Turns out I am mad, mad about penalties. I absolutely love penalties. And so that's uh, a book I've written. I'm now a world expert, as you'd expect, on penalties. And I actually help football clubs and national teams and players improve their penalty records. I've got loads of tricks about how to score from the spot. So come to me if you need any help with your penalties. So I've written books as well. So we both knew how to write, but we wanted to get it really perfect for football school. 
So we sent um, our, our publishers a, a version of what we wanted to do, and they said, yeah, it's really good, but we think it could be a bit better. So have another go. So we had another go. Uh, we put in some more jokes. Uh, we worked our hardest on it. And um, they said, yeah, it's really good, but we think it could be better. So what I'm going to show you now, if, if, if my screen works, is um, what came up on the third draft of, oh, look, there's the slide. I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, I was almost right. Did I say 61 goals? Yeah. Anyway, what I'm going to show you is the third, this is the third draft of what we came up with um, when Alex and I were, were writing the book. And as you can see, there are a lot of red marks, red marks, blue marks, lots of corrections. And these corrections are from our editor. So the job of the editor is to make, make the work as good as possible. So I want to pause the video shortly because I want you to have a think of some words that Alex and I might have felt when we got this vid when we got this piece of paper back. This is our feedback. How do you think Alex and I felt when we saw what our editor had said about our work? Look at all those markings, look at all those changes we have to make. Have a think about some emotion words or adjectives that we might have felt. So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video now and have a quick chat if you're with people, or have a quick think if you're on your own about some of those words and then come back to me when you're done. <coughs> okay, welcome back. Uh, I hope you've had a nice chat or think about some of the words. And in the old days, as you saw, I used to go to schools and have these conversations in real life with people. And some of the answers I got for this question were, were really interesting. And a lot of the time um, kids would say, oh, you must have felt really sad or upset or frustrated, or angry, or embarrassed, or uh, disappointed, or um, melancholic. Sometimes some, some of the kids come up with amazing words um, to describe this feeling of frustration and, and upset that we felt. And maybe some of you came up with those words as well. But actually, we weren't any of those words. We felt happy and pleased so if you came up with those words and the positive words, well done you. Uh, and the reason for that is because our editor, whose job it is, is to improve our work, had clearly gone through every single line of this text to make it as good as possible, to try and improve it as much as possible. And we felt really lucky and privileged that we had an editor who was so dedicated and so engaged and so trying so hard to improve our work. We felt very lucky that, 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 that we had that. And I don't think you will ever get a piece of work back with as many markings or corrections as this. And we all make mistakes in work. Alex and I make mistakes, as you can see, from this piece of paper, and I'm sure you do too sometimes as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's how you respond to those mistakes. And I've met some of your teachers uh, not all of them, but I know all of them are working exceptionally hard at the moment, but the ones I've met are fantastic teachers. And so if you ever get a piece of work back with any changes, any corrections made, any feedback at all, you shouldn't feel any of the words of sadness that you might have thought about at the beginning of this conversation. You shouldn't feel sad, frustrated, angry, upset, disappointed or embarrassed. You should actually feel pleased that your teachers are working so hard with you to improve your work, to make your work the best it can possibly be because that's their job and you're very lucky to have them because they are fantastic teachers just like I have a fantastic editor who has the same job to make my work as good as it can be and remember we all make mistakes look at the mistakes that Alex and I have made on this one piece of paper this one page so many areas for improvement but we all must learn from them and look at them and go yes that's right I can get better Thank you for helping me. And it becomes a really positive experience. So that's one lesson I really took away from writing these books and doing it with a friend is a very different process. But the idea of getting feedback and constructive help, just like you get from your teachers, is really helpful and powerful. So that's one thing about writing the book. I'm going to get onto more fun stuff now. For example, our YouTube channel, uh, it's youtube.com forward slash football school facts. There are lessons there, which are remote lessons. We've also got some funny videos of Alex and I playing tricks on each other. I once poured some spaghetti 
on Alex's head to make him look like Neymar. And in return, he cracked an egg on my head. And I can't even remember why he did that, but he came up with some kind of football reason to do that, which wasn't very nice for him. But get on to that one. Uh, this week, in fact, what round World Book Day, we will be um, putting a really special football school World Book Day super quiz on our YouTube channel. We will be getting special guests, footballers, to ask and put some questions. So we're really excited about that as well. We also have a Young Sports Writer of the Year competition, which we do with a national newspaper called The Guardian. And so if you love reading and love writing, because one can very much lead to the other, as it did for me, uh, we suggest you join, you get involved in this. And I will tell your teachers about this nearer the time. It happens in May, but the prizes are amazing. You get published in a national newspaper. So everyone in the country can read your work. We had an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old win the award last year. Someone writing about a snowboarder and a basketball match. So it doesn't even need to be about football, but it is a brilliant competition. We have thousands of entries from all over the country. So I really urge you to get involved in that. But today and this week is really about this. It's about World Book Day. It's about loving reading, loving books, if you love football, that is fantastic too. But if you want to read about something other than football, of course, there are loads of books out there for you as well. The joy of reading can give so much pleasure to so many people. So I really would urge you to pick up a book, any book, doesn't have to be football school, but this week you can get a free copy of this book. So if you really want it, ask your teachers to get a token, go into a participating bookseller or find a way to get your World Book Day book of football school. And I will see you again very soon for uh, some questions. I'm really looking forward to meeting you all. And you can tell me how your samba dance went, how the football, the maths quiz went, uh, what your teachers are like at dancing. And indeed, if you've managed to get hold of any of the football school books as well. So for now, I'm going to blow my final whistle and I will see you very soon. Happy World Book Day. <laughs>